Hey guys, XSign50 here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to wire up an exit sign or an emergency light. Alright guys, so I'm, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I do want to say a quick things before we do begin the tutorial. Number one, this is an updated version of a, the original video I made way back in the day. Um, I just did this because a lot of people have been asking me questions, people have been wondering how to wire up an emergency light, and a bunch of other stuff, so I'm like, I just decided to redo it. Note two, um, this is kind of a disclaimer, I'm not responsible for any actions if you shock yourself, if you cause a fire, anything like that. If you break your sign, I'm not responsible, I'm just showing you guys how to wire it. So I am using an exit sign combo because it's kind of like both types of units. So it's a, obviously in the name, it is a combination of an exit sign right here. Put that on top of that. And it is also a combination of a emergency light. So I'm doing a combo for a couple of reasons. One, so you guys know how to wire up an exit sign. Two, so you guys know how to wire up an emergency light. And three, if you do have a combo, you know how to wire up a combo. So I guess let's, I'll show you guys what you need to get to wire up the sign. So here's some things you'll need. Um, number one, you'll need some wire nuts, two wire nuts. Uh, number two, you'll need a wire cutter slash stripper, whatever you want to call it. Number three, you will need a extension cord like this. Doesn't matter what size, just you gotta have one or color. And number four is a, f um, a flathead screwdriver right here. And of course your exit sign or emergency light. So now that's all out of the way, let's go ahead and move all this. So to open up your unit, if you have an exit sign or exit sign combo, take your uh, flathead screwdriver and on the bottom of it you should see two tabs, sometimes eight. But what you need to do is to get off the exit sign faceplate is so take your flathead screwdriver and poke the tabs each side to loosen the cover. Just take it off. If you have an older sign you might have to unscrew some Phillips head screws but most of the time it's just the tab mechanism. If you have an emergency light that is different, uh, it either might be like this where you take your thumb and just pop it out like that, or it might be like same the tab mechanism right here, and you just do the same thing like that. So, all right. So now what you need to do is get your um, extension cord like this and take your wire cutters slash strippers and cut off the plug right here so you would do that and then just cut it off. I'm not going to be cutting this one since I already have a cord that's already been cut off. So once you cut it off it should just look bare like this just like this. What you need to do is then split them so they'll become like like this as you can tell and then what you need to do is strip the two wires so then you got your power supply slash plug all ready to go. All right, so the next step is to get a uh, knock out or take out a hole to get your wires in. Um, so most exit signs have a slot on top that you either need to just, just take out, like you just take out a tab, or you need to knock out with a screwdriver. So what it's designed to be for is to put it on the ceiling with a canopy, but if you're just having it either to put on a wall or just for fun, then just knock it out for the wiring. If it is an emergency light, and they, they most emergency lights do not have that type of tab on top of it, like here's one, doesn't have it, here's another one that doesn't have it, and here's one that doesn't have it either, there should be a hole on the back of it you can just run the wires out of. Which most of the time you don't need to knock out, it's already there for you. So what you need to do is just take the tabs like this and then just punch them out. And this will this little piece will come out. If it's an older sign, you might need to knock it out with a hammer or flathead screwdriver. So now that that hole is out, you can let me zoom in. Um, you can take your extension cord and then run the wires inside 
like this. And let me change this. Um, so when you're inside, you should see a lot of things. Either a small battery like this, a big 6 volt, some circuitry, a transformer, button, LED, etc. So to wire it, you should see three wires inside of it. A black and white and a red. Now here's the part you need to do some info, uh, like look up about. So these most signs and emergency lights have three wires for two types of voltages. One, the most common, 120 volts AC. The second one is not as common, 277 volts AC. So depending on your business or house, you need to just um, do some research on what your house provides. Most likely it would be 120 volts AC, but if not, then you need to use the red wire. So what if it, your house or building is 120 volts AC, use the black and white wire. If it is 277 volts AC, use the red and white wire. But since my house isn't 277, it's 120 volts AC, I'm going to be using the black and white. So now let's go ahead and wire it up. So inside, let's do it. So on your extension cord, you should, to know the difference between negative and positive, you need to just feel the wire, if that makes sense. Whatever side ha is the smooth side, then that means that is, ne uh, yeah, negative. And whatever, or whatever side is the rough side or bumpy side is the positive. So since this one right here is negative, Let's take the black wire and then, first of all, line it up and twist it a little bit, not too much. And then take your wire nut right here and then just twist it on. If your wire nut will not stay on, then either get a smaller wire nut or put some electrical tape at the end of it. Sorry if you couldn't see that. My camera just doesn't like to focus. And now let's do the other one right here. And twist it a bit like this and, then, and also make sure there's no power going to this because you can you can shock yourself so let's go ahead and twist it on I don't know if this one might work oh there we go all right so now that's wired you should see right there is a tab what that tab is meant for is so you won't see any shadows in the sign so what you can do is just place your wires you run it out just place your wire between that tab. Sometimes it's a bit tricky to get it. And then they should just stay in there like that. Next thing you want to do is let's zoom out. Is if you have a battery backup sign or you have an emergency, you need to plug in the battery. So right here, as you can see, there's a cable going directly to the battery and a little plug in. All you need to do plug that right into the circuit board or the snap and the battery has been connected. If you have an emergency light and you have it open, you should see the same thing right here. Just plug that cable in. And a quick note and kind of safety tip is if your sign is not does not have AC power, do not keep it don't do not keep the battery plugged into the unit because it can mess up the circuitry from the battery or yeah. So now I'm going to go ahead and plug this in, making sure everything is good and tight. All right. So now let's go. I'm, I'll go ahead and plug this into the wall. And what exit signs and emergency lights are meant to do, if you're wondering why is there a battery, is if you ever have a power outage or failure, if you have an exit sign, your exit sign will continue to stay on. If you have an emergency light, the two lights will come on. And if it's a combo, it will do both. So now that your sign is on, make sure there's no sparks or any small flames. All right. Well, kind of unlike, unlikely, but you know. Here's your exit sign plate, and there's two your arrows if you ever want to punch them out. And now just go ahead and simply snap on the sign like this. If you have an old-fashioned sign, go ahead and screw in the screws. Or if you have an emergency light, just snap the back plate in like this. And then just snap it and then I don't have any tabs but they should just snap back in all right so now what we can do is if you've ever wondered on exit signs and emergency lights there's on the side of it or on the bottom of it there's a button and a red light 
Basically, the red light is an AC light that will tell you if the unit is powered or not. And on your sign or emergency light, you should see the red light on. If it's not on and the unit isn't on, then you either wired it wrong, which you need to immediately unplug, or um, the, the unit just doesn't work. So if you want to test your battery on your exit sign or emergency light, press the button right here. And what it'll do is test the battery, and it'll be on. If you have an exit sign and you press the test button, the exit sign should stay on. If you have an emergency light, the light should come on. Or if it's a combo, both should happen. <clears throat> if you press it and nothing happens, or the unit turns off, then you have a bad battery or a bad unit. All right, and of course, since these are meant um, for safety uh, purposes, make sure to punch out the arrows if necessary, and if you have an emergency auto combo, to adjust the heads. So like, even though mine isn't up, I could adjust it to point down like this. So, because that will that will be great if there was ever a power outage. Um, I guess that is it, guys. If you do have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, hope this tutorial helped you. And I guess I will see you guys in another video. And because, let's unplug it. Okay, so I'll see you guys in another video. Bye.